Nigeria's capital city is covered with rocks and hills. These uneven plains give the city a distinct and alluring aesthetic, which has brought tourists and investors in their droves over the past few years. Pape, that's what the people here call this magnificent site. It means rock and was coined by the Gwari people of Abuja. People come around here a lot for parties, events, and weddings. Basically, nice things happen around here. Honestly, when the work for this project began, I wasn't born yet, because that was 50 going to 60 years ago. But it has been about 15 years ago since the company packed up. I have seen a lot of people not people from Papi. Some people come from Lagos, Portaiko, Kanu, all those kind of places. Some people, they will even come and ask me, where is Krosho? I've been hearing about Krosho, where is Krosho? I'm just coming down from airport now. This is just my car, I'm just to see where is Krosho. So a lot of people have been, been, have been here, including some superstars, like some people like Techno, Yemi Aladi. All those superstars, they have been here before just to make sure they do their video. Ruan Kenaji, Ruan in Kindu by Shidekao, according to Angul in the Pitakama map of Africa, a massy king of Samachan. There's an angle you stand at that makes the lake look like the map of Africa, but you have to be up high to see it. That is one thing that attracts a lot of people. People come around because it's a nice place to rest, get some fresh air, enjoy watching the beautiful views of the water and rocks and take nice pictures. The still lake, although stagnant, reflects like a glistering emerald gem as the sun bounces upon its surface. Its width covers about 131,000 square meters. The rock piles defy the very law of physics, with boulders being held up by the smallest rocks. Mountains so tall they elevate you to see Pape and bits of Abuja on a miniature scale. You'll see the rusty roofs that tell a story of the natives and how long they've lived here and still exist in a fast developing community. <laughs> The Cross Rocks project began in 1984. The rocks were blasted and sold for building projects such as houses and road constructions. Years after that, the project was put on pause because of the land dispute between the natives and the blasters. Initially, when the project started, the land wasn't paid for but they began to farm on the land, rearing several crops while still blasting. The blasters and staff of the Cross Rocks project had to pay to proceed with their rock blasting project and sales of these rocks. They packed up the project in 2012, but left the quarry. This quarry kept drowning our people. Women and children would go to swimming, bath or fetch water and will never return. The security around there knew about this. We only get to see their corpses later. Anywhere you find water like this, yes, there must be a mistake from sometimes children, sometimes from adult, sometimes maybe you may a little bit high, maybe you mistakenly. And if this place is not a place that you said you want to make mistake, because if you make mistake, it's not that kind of place that if you fall from up, it's, it's from, up to, from up to down, it takes you some second to get down. And when you get down, you know that it's a rock. The same as I've seen the upside, I've seen all over the place is rock. That's how the downside too is. So falling from it up to down, I do not give you that guarantee, 100% guarantee, survivor. These rocks that you see, these mountains, are rubbles of an abandoned granite quarry from 2010 that got flooded and formed a beautiful lake. 
Crushed Rock today, as it is popularly known, is a major tourist attraction but is also home and an ancestral land to the Gwari people. Unknown to most people, this tourist attraction is somewhat man-made. The beauty of this place lies at the intersection of God-given nature and human industrialist advancement. It's almost ironic that the commercial exploitation of rocks led to an advancement of nature's beauty in such a captivating way. People come around here to take pictures, like pictures for weddings, celebrating birthdays, and throw parties too. Lovers come here to spend time alone and do lovely things. This place is practically a place for lovers. Since I've been here, I have seen a lot of, not, I will not say hundreds, I will not say 200, I've seen thousands of people that have been in different states coming around here to, to watch this very stone. The Wari people are indigenous to Abuja and as such live on their ancestral lands, many which are located in the highbrow areas of Abuja. Maitama is Abuja's most expensive neighborhood where houses on average go for about a million dollars. Its parks and neatly paved roads complement rows of contemporary houses built for Nigeria's elite. Five minutes away from Maitama on the other side is Papi. Papi in the Abuja layout forms a part of the new Maitama extension where plots of land sell for tens of millions of naira. When the government comes in to develop the shanty houses and shops of the Gwari people are destroyed to make way for the infrastructure and residential land allocations. Where they no mark, now they start to demolish. They no mark anywhere. Down up for that shop, there for that side. Now they mark them before. So as they mark there before, so they say now for fronts, they say now they go demolish. For that shop, I know say they mark this shop. Then they come now here and say they don't start. This demolition, it come suddenly and we no get information. After we still try to rebuild our office again, they still come and demolish it. So now, if they fall now, everybody will just run away, enter this vehicle. So we still see this one, we still build another basha, you know, they still come and demolish it. Even people that are selling food for us, it's not easy. For someone stay inside strong, they give the cook food. All this small, small basha, they will, they will, so people are tired. Now people say, Mama, come pack your load. I say, wait till I go feed carry. Because I don't feed carry anything. Leg, don't they pay me? So, now that time we say, if I fall, since that time, now the leg, they pay me. I don't feel what can wear. So, now people help me to pack some load. So, the many one, that aboki, that pantika boy, they don't tifa, they don't carry and go. Compensation of indigents is a cornerstone of this development policy, but in certain cases, it's not well implemented. So, we then suggested that the land should be made to serve both us and the area council and even shared our drafted plan for the market structure with them. They approved the plan and we signed agreement papers, but we are never given our copies to show proof of partnered ownership team now. This leads to a cycle of homelessness, poverty and strife for the Gwari people and other inhabitants of Papi. As we have seen, Crushed Rock in Papi is a beautiful and captivating sight to behold. However, it is important to acknowledge the complex reality that lies behind this attraction. For the inhabitants and victims of demolition, crushed rock represents a different kind of reality, one that is filled with displacement and uncertainty. We must listen to their stories and experiences to truly understand the impact of development and progress. Only then can we create a sustainable and equitable future for all. So the next time you think about the crushed rock, let it not just reflect as a tourist attraction in your mind's eye. 
see it through the eyes of the people who had the privilege of building their houses from these rocks. Through the eyes of those who lost their loved ones to this lake. Through the eyes of those who were displaced, who lost their shops and houses. See Papi through my eyes.